Hey everybody, welcome back to Altered Saying Snow Removal. Wait a minute, that's not it. <laughs> Right, guys I can't emphasize this enough don't do anything I do in these videos I have no clue what I'm doing I'm lucky I haven't been seriously injured already um, just so you know though for this project I did wear safety glasses and hearing protection I don't know if there's anything else I needed but that's what I was working with hey everybody I'm making a video and Jackie's outside the door again, this time with the broom. I can hear her making noise. You make a noise again, I'm making a video. I'm <laughs> cleaning <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> okay everybody, so we had a big dump of snow last night. Got about 35 centimeters here where I live. And so I've been tinkering with the manifold today and doing a little bit of porting. I posted a picture on the Altered Stanks Facebook page and somebody asked me, are you going to do a video on it to share your techniques and the tools you use? So as far as techniques go, I am not a porter and this is actually the first project I've really tackled. I've done some light gasket matching and some cleanup work, you know, casting flash and whatnot. Nothing big. So I don't think I'd be the best person to get the techniques from. Luckily, we have uh, TMOS who's got a site, which I'll put down below. And that's where I've been getting my information from. So as far as tools used, I picked up uh, a rotary tool at one of the local hardware stores. They were blowing them out for $9.99, which was really cool. And then I bought a box of different porting burrs off Amazon. These things have been working really good for me and they were cheap. The one I've used the most, and I don't know if that's if this is what the porters use the most, but the one, but the one that I've had the most uh, ease of working with is this one that's a bit of a cone shape. Uh, I read online that you should spray it once in a while with some penetrating oil. That will keep it from gumming up. So I've been doing that. So another thing that I bought are these sanding rolls. I've been using them for the final finish on the ports. They come with arbors that I can put in the rotary tool and they've been working out really good for me. So these were pretty cheap as well. The other thing I've got going on is we've got a light. I've just got it clipped onto the manifold. I've got it shining through the port as I work. And I've got it up on the workbench here. If you're ever going to tackle a porting project, I would recommend setting yourself up somewhere nice like this. I've got a chair, got my workbench, makes things a lot easier. And so with these GT40 manifolds from the reading I've been doing, and you can see them, one in five runner have the biggest bend in them. Their flow is not straight. So I've had all of the curves welded so that I can try and straighten them out. So when I started this project, I had it in my mind that I was going to straighten one in five intake runner as much as I could. I actually posted this and TMOS saw it. And so thankfully he replied to my post and he told me that basically you don't want to straighten one in five runners out 100%. You want more of a gradual radius. So originally I was going to take them right out, basically have them in a V shape. What I gathered from his information was you want the airflow to curve downward and there's some great information on his site about airflow and how this works and after reading it I understand more about what he's saying so if this is something you're going to get into I would definitely recommend going to his site reading the information there it helped me quite a bit
All right, guys, it's a whole new day out here in the garage, and I'm still working on this intake. This thing has taken an unbelievable amount of time. At least for me, I'm just, this is my first time porting. I was going to call myself an amateur porter. I'm not even that. This is just the first time I've done any type of real porting. So, and I don't even know if you can call what I'm doing real porting, actually. I'm just trying my best. So, earlier in the video, I talked a bit about doing the inside work first so that your rotary tool when it's spinning it may mark up the outside and you want to tackle this last which is something I saw on one of TMOS's pages. Uh, TMOS has given me some uh, great information to deal with the 1 in 5 runner. I had Tony from Big Dog Sporting chime in. I want to say thanks Tony for the information that you gave me. Uh, he gave me some insight into some different things about porting the intake and so I started looking more at his pages and his YouTube channel. So I've been watching some of Tony's videos and he has one video in particular that I was watching where he's doing a GT40 like this and he's got a three quarter inch socket, he drops it down through and it falls out. So while I was porting, I got my 1250 gasket. I scribed a line which you probably can't see but this is an untouched port with a 1250 scribe line around it. I got my own three quarter inch socket and there's no way you can get that down through there. Uh, it's quite far out. So I've been porting on this port for a while now. This is quite a bit bigger and I still can't get this 1250 in here. So the number one runner, I worked on it for quite a while and I've got it to where it will fall down through there. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let me just fish that in. Okay, so while the 7.8 socket may not seem that uh, important, what I did learn is when I've got my 1250 scribe line here and I'm porting this intake, when I get to the lines, I'm not always at the point where this 1250 socket will go through. It'll still just touch on the outside and it won't go through. So. While I was messing around, if you take your 7.8 socket, it just fits perfect inside this 1250 gasket. So this 7.8 socket has actually really helped me a lot because being somebody that's never done porting before, I actually thought, okay, I'm at the edge of my scribe lines. I'm good. I wasn't. So you can see here, I've spent a lot of time on this. It still won't go through. The scribe lines are, are gone. I know you probably can't see that. So. If I didn't have this to go by, I would have thought, I'm probably finished here, unless I was taking measurements, exact measurements. But just for a, a quick test, that works really good. So just as a quick test while I'm porting, uh, if it looks like I'm where I need to be, this is uh, a very fast way to tell. Just like that. So I'm going to have to get back to work on this because I'm not quite there yet. Start to get pretty close. Okay, guys, so it's several minutes later since uh, since I last had the camera on. Got the seven eight socket here, and it's just barely starting to fit. So that gives you an idea how when you scribe the line on the 1250 gasket, if you're taking it out to that point, it still may not be where you think it is without measuring. So 
Yeah, and so for me, this 7 8 socket has been quite handy just to quickly see where I'm at. Okay, so I've been doing some more grinding on the number two intake port. Got our 7 8 socket here and managed to get it right down through there. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I do have some more cleanup work I want to do to it. Actually, both the number one and two runner but I still have to get all the rest of the runners taken out to the 1250 gasket. So that's where I'm at with the intake. Thanks for following along with me today. If you've been finding any of the videos interesting, please give us a like, please subscribe. And as always, remember what we say here at Altered Stangs, leave no stang unaltered. Till next time, bye for now.